What's going on guys? It's Rob. I'm back on YouTube. I hope everybody's staying safe out there. It's getting crazy. But uh, I'm here back finally to review the Port Keys PT5. Uh, Port Keys has so very graciously sent me this monitor for review. So I'm looking forward to doing both an unbox and a review. And I want to talk about how this monitor differs from other monitors on the market at this price point and even above. So uh, let's get into it. So before I actually open this up, I wanna preface this by saying I am a huge fan of port keys and not because they sent me a monitor for review. Uh, I have the LH5, which I also reviewed on my channel right here. And I bought this with my own money. And I also have my Komodo here outfitted with the BM5 Mark III, which I highly recommend. It's my favorite monitor I've ever used. So um, yeah. Again, I bought this with my own money. So once again, I'm just a fan of port keys in general. I appreciate that they sent me this for review and uh, I'm pretty excited to compare it to their other monitors. So let's pop it open. So offhand, it comes in a fairly large, uh, and I say that in a good way because a lot of their other monitor cases are pretty small. So I'm glad because you could probably put a couple more things in here that's not just a monitor. So this is good. Um, Looks like ABS plastic here. It's pretty sturdy. I think it would probably survive a, a, a good drop. Uh, let's pop it open and see what we got. So it's got four clasps to uh, close it up. Ooh, now that's nice. And like I mentioned, definitely has room for additional accessories or cables or whatnot. The other ones are, have been pretty tight and specific to the monitor. Um, this is awesome. I love their new design, their logo here. It appears this is a sunshade that they have included, which is sweet. And this is the monitor guys. They actually have also included a monitor mount, which is a first out of all their monitors. The first time I've opened one that comes with this mount. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I don't know how well this is. I'd have to test it. Uh, how well it is uh, made in comparison to other monitor mounts on the market. I use small rig, but um, especially for a budget monitor, that's awesome that it comes with this. And I see it coming in very useful to be able to just take it out the box and get going. So this is a five inch monitor. Um, the bezel is very thin, which I can appreciate. It does have these pieces here that um, I don't believe are permanently attached. Nope. It seems like, yeah, these could be removed in case you do not want to put the sun hood in. That is sleek, man. I'm not going to lie. That is just a little bit wider than a cell phone. Uh, matter of fact, I have my Galaxy Note 20 here for comparison. And it is larger, obviously, than, uh, than the monitor, but it is actually wider than the monitor, as a matter of fact. So this is... Uh, like very compact and i love that about it because again comparing it to like an lh5 this bezel is like really chunky so as you can see monitor sizes themselves uh and this monitor has obviously can see in better days but that's just a testament to how much i've used this thing um but the screen sizes are pretty much identical except for the bezels themselves obviously are different and this monitor is a lot more compact i love that about that already so coming over on this side, we have HDMI in and HDMI out, as well as a headphone jack. So if you need to monitor your audio, HDMI in and out is awesome for looping out, especially if you're doing like a Terra deck or something like that. So you can both monitor your image and output it to uh, an external HDMI transmitter. On the opposite side, we have the on and off switch, which flipping it, has a little bit more of a tactile feel than previous monitors. Um, it used to also be on the top. The top is now completely clear, so again, it just adds to the sleekness of this monitor design. So on this side, we have the power button, which feels pretty tactile. There's an audible click. In comparison to their other monitors, there's um, less of a resistance when you flip back and forth, so it's hard to tell when you've actually flipped it or not, so that's good. Um, there's also a USB port on this side, so you can load in your LUTs. 
and there is a 7 to 24 volt input here so that you can use just looks like a regular 12 volt DC input here for powering your monitor. And on the back we have the MPF plate, which uh, in this one it appears that is actually built in on say like this one, um, you could actually remove the plate, swap it out for a different um, battery mount. So you can actually use like Canon LPE6 by flipping the switch and having it adjusted. But uh, it looks like on this one it is just MPF and that's all you're getting, uh, which is not a bad thing to be honest i think mps lasts a good while and you can get different sizes however you want so um a couple good points is actually here i'm not sure if you can see it but um on here we have a few different notes on the monitor so as you can see this is the model pt5 um it is a five inch picture uh resolution is 1920 by 1080 so just regular 1080 hd image the hdmi supports up to 4k 30 at 30 frames per second basically um this is something I want to talk about in depth because this is where this monitor kind of changes things. So the color, as you can see, is 8 plus 2 FRC. Uh, so it's essentially a 10-bit monitor. I say essentially because it is not a true 10-bit monitor. And many monitors out there that claim to be 10-bit aren't actually. They really are 8 plus 2 FRC. I'll get into that in a bit. Maximum brightness, this would be my only nitpicky issue with this monitor, is only 500 nit, which unfortunately is not super bright, uh, especially for outdoor usage. However, the fact that they included this is awesome because this will make it a lot more usable out in bright sunlight. So um, I'm actually keen on testing this part out before I talk about it more. And lastly, on the notes in the back, we have the power consumption of six watts. So in essence, this is six watts an hour at the, I'm assuming at 500 nit. So that means that you would get out of, let's say, a, you know, 30 watt uh, battery, you'd get about four hours, give or take. Man, my math shit. What else do we have in this box? Uh, again, I took these off and these are the clips here for the sun hood. I'm gonna go ahead and try these on it's a snug uh, looks like it's just a push fit so it doesn't clip into anything um, it's just a very tight fit you kind of just push them on and then they have these little clips here if you can see so basically you just put it in and slide down same on this side push in slide and it's on there pretty sturdy as you can see I'm pulling on it a good bit not really going anywhere actually I didn't get that one in all the way there we go so yeah, um, looks like you could take a bump without losing its place. Um, it's plastic and there's no felt or any kind of um, flocking on the inside. So it may potentially be reflective depending on what uh, light source you have pointing into this. So that might be my only caveat to basically pay attention to there. But outside of that, um, it seems very, very simple on the outside, which uh, could be a pro and a con depending on how you feel. Speaking on that, it's basically meaning normally there's buttons out here, like once again, in comparison to my LH5, you have the buttons. You also have uh, F1234, which are your custom keys, and the power button was also a push button to select. Whereas now, this is pretty much a button free monitor all the way around. So what that means is it's very likely that it is strictly touchscreen only and menu based. I'm excited because the BM5WR3, which I use on my Komodo has a brand new menu system. I'm gonna assume right now before I turn this on that the menu system is exactly the same, uh, which is a good thing because they really revamped their whole UI and it is awesome. Aside from that, what you get here is an HDMI to a micro HDMI, and this will work for some cameras. Um, I believe some older Sony cameras had micro HDMI. So um, yeah, this is a, a good cable to have for some of the manufacturers now. It appears there's more things that I may have missed. Luckily, I started tapping around in this foam, but underneath the foam, there is a hex key. This would be to tighten your monitor mount here that they include for you. So if you needed to uh, add resistance or loosen this up, you can go ahead and use that included hex key to tighten or loosen this. Likewise, they include a full size HDMI cable. I'm gonna go ahead and undo it here. And it looks like it is about two feet. 
This is about a 24 inch HDMI full size cable. This is good for like your A7S threes that I'm filming with up here. And um, that's awesome that they include two separate cables, probably some of the more popular ones that are used for uh, a lot of different cameras. And lastly, they include a user manual. So let's take a quick look through it, which looking through it, there is a section which seems to be in Chinese and there is indeed a English version, which is nice. Um, it talks about the different things that it has. Um, I forgot to obviously talk about it, but there is a quarter inch thread on the bottom. That's the only threaded hole that it has on the monitor for attachment points. That's another potential negative. If you're looking to flip this maybe upside down, or if you wanted to side mount it with a swivel mount, uh, then this monitor will not be able to accommodate that. Without further ado, guys, I wanted to obviously discuss the contents of the uh, of what comes with it. But now I want to go ahead and get into the actual usage of the monitor and discuss some of the features. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so we're here at the actual monitor review. I promised to talk about the A plus two bit FRC which stands for frame rate control. And in essence, what it does is it displays as many colors as a normal 10 bit monitor would, which is 1.07 billion approximately. But basically it is not a true 10 bit monitor, uh, meaning it, an actual 10 bit monitor would be a lot more accurate at displaying colors. But basically what frame rate control does is use adjacent colors to the original color and then it'll flash these two back to back basically very quickly in a way that most people won't be able to see. That will fool our eyes into seeing a color uh, even though it's not technically being displayed. It is a flicker between two colors so quickly that it appears that the color is there. It's a little confusing. There's a lot more information regarding this technology. Getting into the actual monitor itself, Right now I have a monitor on top of my A7S III. So I'm gonna go ahead and first turn it off and then I'm gonna turn it back on and see how long it takes to actually display an image. So roughly about six to seven seconds before I get an image up from turning it on. So as I mentioned earlier, the bezel is clear of buttons. The only real physical button really is the uh, turn on and off button. That means the uh, majority of the menu is actually built into the touchscreen. So to get the menu up, usually you would just tap once. As you can see at the main menu that comes up in your first tap, you see here the uh, setting, which right now I am showing a 1080p at 24 frames per second. That is the output from the A7S that's coming into the camera. So over here we have the LUT display on and off button. So basically if you have any LUT loaded, you would be able to turn it off here. Um, so I'll show you guys that in a second. Heading over this way, this is the brightness control. This is not the actual brightness of the image, but physical brightness of the actual monitor, meaning the backlight. So tapping on this will usually just increase the brightness up to its max. So 10 is usually where this maxes out in this UI. As you can see, it's a lot brighter than where it was, which was at three. I'll go ahead and put it back on three so that we can continue to see basically where exposed. Lastly, you have where your battery voltage is. This is my MPF battery that I have uh, running to it right now. That's current voltage being displayed. So this is the first menu. Swiping right on any page would take you to the adjust the function settings. So going back to the LUT section, if you click on the LUT on button, you'll get to the section in the main menu where you can actually review LUTs. Uh, here you'll be able to turn LUTs on and off. Right now I don't have anything loaded so there was no change to the actual image, but that's where you'd be able to turn your LUT on and off. Outside of that, here's where you'd be able to load your USB LUTs. So if you have LUTs loaded on a USB stick that you insert into the side of the monitor, so obviously right now I have no device there, but this is where you'd load it. You would just select your 3D LUTs here and that will actually should display here as long as it's in a proper format, usually .cube. Uh, to go back, you would just press this world icon here at the top. So back on the screen here, uh, this is where you would reset your LUT. We'll go ahead and move on to the image section of this menu. So here's where you're just your brightness, contrast, chroma, sharpness, and tint. If you can see at the bottom, not sure, but there's the sub menu within this menu. It would also be by swiping. You'll be able to change your anamorphic modes, which we have 
1.95, obviously two times, 2.3 times, and a user defined, which you can adjust manually here. So going back to normal setting, and next to that you have your backlight settings, so you can go all the way up to 10, and it doesn't look like you can go all the way around, so you can't click up one more time and it'll go to one, so you have to manually go back and forth between 10 and one. So you can swipe left and right to change the menu settings. So again, from main menu here to the menu that has all of the settings. And then next to the backlight setting, you have your color temperature setting. Uh, you have 6,500, 7,500, 9,300 manual. And then you have 5,600 Kelvin and back to 6,500. Okay, so moving past that, you have the display menu. This is where you'd be able to flip your image and or flip your on-screen display information. So if I click on this, it'll actually physically flip my entire display, including the text and the image. But let's say I wanted the image flip, but not the text. I can click here and this will actually flip the actual on-screen information, but leave the image flipped and vice versa. I can go ahead and flip the display back. And then I can flip just the text or the menus. So very useful if you're mounting this monitor in a very different orientation. Uh, maybe you have an overhead situation or you're mounting it upside down. Okay, going to the um, on-screen display languages, you have English, you have Chinese. Um, doesn't seem like there's a whole ton of different options, so just be aware. This is the transparency, of course, if you wanted to adjust it. This is off, there's this is off, there's low, middle, high. Um, I like to keep it either low or off so that I can see the display information clearly. Uh, there's your system reset button if you need to reset the entire system and all the settings. And then the black level, which I would keep it on because it definitely brings the blacks to a true black point or what appears to be. This is the LUT menu here that we talked about earlier. Again, you have your option. Here you have your audio section, very simple and very minimal. You have your volume information. So basically whatever uh, headphone you have plugged in, you can control the volume that's coming out of the headphone jack. And lastly on this section is the firmware update. So port keys does release firmware updates for different monitors. This is where you'd plug in a USB again on the side with the firmware file and click on update. And you'll be able to go ahead and in this case, I don't have a USB, but you'll be able to update your firmware that way. So moving on, I call this a main menu because you'll be doing most of your messing around in here. Once your monitor is set and the other things, you really won't be making many changes, but these are where your tools are at. So I guess a better name for this menu would be the tool menu. You click here, you can actually access all the tools. You have guides, crosshairs, grids, peaking, false color. There's zebras, which are definitely very useful. Um, Luma and RGB waveforms. There's your audio meters if you're monitoring audio on this monitor. Uh, your LUT settings. And then you can also zoom. So how you use this menu basically is depending on what you click on, it would actually load onto these sidebars here. So every time you click on add, you'll be able to change whatever item you want to put in basically the quick toolbar. Uh, right now it's check field. Let's change it to something that we can use here, crosshair. I'll back out. So basically how this works is you will just select it and it will either toggle on or off. But some of these things do have menus. So I'll show you a different one here. If we come in here, I believe if you click and hold, it will actually reload the menu. So that way you can select something else for that specific icon. Let's say false color. So for false color, as you can see now, there is a separate submenu for false color. Uh, this obviously will happen with different tools that have additional settings that you can adjust. So when false color, you can turn on or off. Cool thing about false color in these monitors, which I don't see in many others, is the a ability to adjust it. So you're able to adjust basically the peak points for both over and under. Moving on, I'll add another tool here. Um, we can try see RGB waveform as you can see it loaded it there and I can go ahead and add another one and we can try our peaking these are pretty commonly used and go back here so now I can 
actually come into false color that will be off this is our waveforms here rgb waveforms you can turn them on or off and here's the settings for the actual waveforms by tapping on the actual icon a second time so here you can turn it on and off you can change the blending mode which will change how transparent it is uh, the brightness of the actual waveform itself and there's a flip for warning basically when you're peaking so super useful also there's buttons on where you can have the waveform show up relative to your monitor so turn that off by tapping on it then on peaking you select it as you can see the peaking came on right now it's set on red if you tap it again the additional menu comes up regarding the settings of this tool so you can turn peaking on and off there's original style there's black style so you can have just a peaking show up uh, grayscale different types of tones basically against your peaking color and then there's sensitivity uh, I usually like to keep that pretty low so that you can kind of just be very specific of what is in focus and then likewise you have your color selection here of what color you would like your your peaking to, to show up in uh, usually I like red Okay, going back a tap by the way does remove all the menus tap again brings them back up okay and then I'll show one more here zooming uh, I think is pretty useful basically when you click it you'll get a zoomed in screen uh, now if you try to move around while the menu is up it will not work you'll have to tap it and then you'd be able to move around with a finger just able to touch and uh, refocus where in that zoom range you're looking at. I'm not sure if it does pinch to zoom. The BM5 does it, but it appears that you'll have to actually use the zoom function to zoom in and out. Let me double check. Yeah, so there's no pinch to zoom. The, the BM5 does allow a pinch to zoom in that function. Outside of that, I'll do guides as well, just so you guys can see when you're doing a guide, especially for potentially widescreen settings or 4 by 3 which is getting pretty popular to film now so when you click on the guide you have your options here you have user defined which then you can actually customize your height and width and then here's your preset options 235 2 to 1 239 to 1 and 185 to 1 1.5 and then 4 by 3 15 by 9 9 by 16 this is great for cell phone and uh, social media use and of course they're normal 16 by 9 there's also masks here so you can turn a mask on and off I'll show what that looks like so basically you can get the guide frames in and not have the screen blacked out I do like that it's blacked out so you can really focus on the fact that this is why you're gonna frame your shot and once again the flip 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 so once again the flip button is there to go ahead and turn the tool on or off I saw in the menu there's also a quick way to access the settings which I believe is to hold and move as you can see the settings are coming up immediately so all the tools that have a subsetting will actually show up here at the bottom immediately so essentially you could swipe left or right to get to either of the menus and then tapping will remove the menu from the screen one last thing I wanted to show is what this monitor will look like if you don't have an image displaying. So I'll go ahead and unplug the HDMI from here. And as you can see, this is the menu. It shows a port keys logo and has a screensaver logo here. All right, so a couple highlights I think are important about this monitor is the weight. It is 130 grams, which is extremely light. Obviously that's before you put a battery on it. That does not by any means mean cheap. There's really no flexing, no noise or anything like this. It seems like it's uh, a unibody. Of course, the 8 plus 2 FRC the frame rate control, um, being able to display 1.07 billion approximate colors. I mean, the color fidelity of this monitor should be miles ahead of your traditional 8-bit monitors. While not quite as good as an actual 10-bit monitor, they're extremely expensive um, because obviously they're extremely color accurate. But this is as close as it gets for this price. It's pretty incredible. The fact that they included a monitor mount that is adjustable, as you can see, I really tightened it up. Um, it does not move at all 
you could swivel it actually there's an adjustment here for swivel so that's pretty awesome that you're actually able to have such a functional mount like just straight out of the box obviously you can find mounts that may suit your needs better however again to be able to get out of the box and just go is pretty awesome okay so what are my negatives here uh ultimately my first negative and my main negative for pretty much all monitors not just porkies but all monitors in this price range tend to be uh not very bright so hard to tell now obviously but even turning this black light on 10 i mean right now on cameras it's going to look pretty bright however going out in bright daylight uh honestly even a thousand nits which i think the shinobi has is just about the cutoff of where i'd want a monitor to be for mainly outdoor usage that's great that they included a sun hood but it does add to the bulk of the monitor and just additional pieces that you have to carry with you if you're going out into a sunlight you know or daylight harsh daylight environment so that would be my biggest quip with the monitor i think another minor thing which i mean it's not a huge deal obviously but uh as you can see this is a non-removable mpf plate so um, it will take MPF and only MPF batteries. You cannot switch this around. But as mentioned earlier, of course, it does have a DC input here that you can use to power it from uh, a V-mount battery or maybe a, a gimbal that outputs power directly into the monitor. So you could power it that way instead of putting a heavy MPF battery on the back. Another slight negative that I found on the monitor is that it does take some time actually to get the image up. I'll go ahead and flip it on again. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I mean, I count it kind of slow. Just be aware that that's a slight fault with the monitor. Um, it's something that could potentially be addressed in a firmware update, I'm not sure, but uh, that's something to note. Overall, I find this monitor to be incredible for people trying to keep their, their rig as lightweight as possible. Uh, again, this monitor weighs almost nothing. If you power it externally without an MPF battery, you will literally have about the weight of the cell phone on top of your camera, which is awesome. Do you think this is a monitor that you might actually pick up? Let me know in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Um, this is Rob with Enemies Vision Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment. I'd like to start doing these more often. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next one.